In this video, we're going to talk about baiting hives for trapping swarms. We trap a couple of hundred swarms every year. We are fortunate enough to be in a, a very high rainfall area. So there are several nectar flows throughout the year. But it, uh, we, we have done this in, in, in other parts of the country where it is drier. So it doesn't matter where you're situated. If you get your hive baited correctly and placed in a, in a, in a good location, you, you, you'll definitely trap swarms. Um, it, it, it may not be in a day or two. It, it could take a month or two or even six months, just depending on, on your, your area and what colonies are existing in the area and are they in a swarming state? Are they in a, a, a phase of swarming? We could ask questions like, what do we use? What do what you want to imitate inside the hive, in, in your, your baited hive, is what would the bees find in nature? They're not going to go for artificial things. They might go for sugars and, and that kind of thing, but they're gonna, they'll quickly eat that up and then move on to something else. But what you want to try and imitate is something that smells like home for the bees. I've heard a lot of other beekeepers talking about using essential oils. I, I stay away from essential oils. The, the problem with essential oils, they do not occur naturally in nesting sites of bees in the wild. If you use just a drop or two too many, you're going to be repelling the bees instead of attracting them. So my advice is stay away from essential oils. If it works for you, I know some guys use eucalyptus, they use lemongrass. I have tried these things. We haven't had much success with them. For the trusted and tried and proven bait for a beehive is a... A mix of propolis and beeswax. So when we are baiting, so like a whole stack of hives, 20, 30, 40 hives for, for trapping, heat up sort of an entire pot of, of, of propolis and bait all the hives. But for the, the purpose of this video, we'll just do one hive and, and just, just bait it with just a little bit of propolis. So today we're going to be baiting just a standard Langstroth design brood box. So this is just a bucket that we collect in field while we're working, either scraping from the top of the frames or from the inside of the lid. In between the, the, your top bars and your lid, the bees often build up quite a bit of propolis. So we just, when you scrape that off with your hive tool, you get a lot of sticky propolis like this. Whether you're a hobby beekeeper or a commercial beekeeper, your baiting principle stays the same. What we like to do is just get a, a mix of beeswax and propolis and just get it down. Like say if you're baiting a hive in field. You just want to heat it up as slow as possible actually. So what you want to do is you want to get your propolis mix on your lid and on the insides of the hive and a little bit on the entrances outside. So if it starts dripping, let it drip on the lid. It doesn't have to be completely melted, just soft and malleable so that it can spread with your, your scraper or your half tool or whatever you're using. We find these uh, paint scrapers seem to work very well. So what I find works well, once it starts smoking like that, you actually put it inside your half like that and close the lid just for a couple of seconds a few moments later you see it's nice and smoky in there and then use your your putty knife and just start smearing your propolis and beeswax on the inside and on the floorboard And then on your entrances. Just around your entrances, just to draw in your initial scout bees. And there we go. So there's your box baited, put your frames back in. So if you're placing your halves on a roof or 
a flat uh, surface, you, you don't have to tie it up. It's always better to uh, put some sort of strapping on for wind, stop the lid coming off. Um, so like one strand of wire on the center. But when we trap, uh, when we take baited hives out to, so to plantations, and then we will we'll, we'll strap, we'll put two wires across and a rope so that it can hang from a tree. We'll put one strand at the back. Doesn't have to be super tight because the rope is going to pull it inwards and that's going to tighten it up. So you just want to have one like that. So you pull it as tight as you can and then you just twist it on itself. Okay, then you'll just on your lid, let the wire slide along. You'll see it'll tighten up. Bottom must stay in the same position, just let it tighten up. One on the front pull it back so you're putting the wires to each other so they're starting to get tight so any anything that pulls on the top of the hive like this will automatically get tighter so your rope so here I've just got a piece of ski rope so this is about 1.2 1.3 meters long so you can tie it anywhere you want but we find stop it from from slipping and going off uh, off level and just uh, moving around in the tree we find Better just to tie it up. So just a normal knot like that. Another one like that. And then you want, so obviously you want, here's the entrances of your hive. You want them to hang lower than the back of your hive. But you want this level so that the bees build parallel to gravity. They don't build across two or three frames at, at, at one time, if, if that makes sense. So you want this to be level, but the back of your hive to be up a little bit so that if it rains, you don't have water going in the entrances of your hive. So your knot, we're going to put our knot there, not on the center, but a little bit towards the back so the, 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 the hive hangs forward. So what I'm doing, I'm just moving my knot to the back slightly. And then the loose ends will just tie together. But any knot works really, as long as it doesn't fall out of the tree. These boxes can get heavy really quickly, especially during a nectar flow. So there, you can see, just off center, slight hang towards the front. And there it hangs with the entrances slightly lower. This is the box we baited today in the video. You can see they've gone for the, the one below it. You can see they're still trying to find their way into the hive. But if, if you're still pretty new to this, you'll see that swarming bees are, um, are very docile. They'll sting if you, if, obviously, if you grab them or if you and then they're just defending themselves, but they're not defensive. They don't have resources to defend. These are African honeybees. So naturally, in a, in a developed colony, they would be uh, defensive and pretty dangerous. But um, this colony is, is, very, is very docile at the moment. Looks like most of them are in already. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers. Mm -hmm.